I remember one rural visit very distinctly. You know, I went with a slightly senior doctor and we were a rural visit and this, this doctor was taking a mirror. He put a headlight, he was taking a mirror and he was seeing the voice box of this patient. And you know your seniors always want to test your knowledge, right? So he calls me and says, Jagdish, tell me your findings. I take that mirror, I put the headlight, I can't make out anything. But I can't say that. So I told him the most common thing. It's like, it's normal. He says, good. Because I couldn't make out anything either. <laughs> you saw it as normal. I said, no, 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 I didn't see. I was just telling you because I didn't want the patient to be treated wrongly. Both of us could not make out what happened in that mirror. The patient, it was fogging, the patient was gagging. We just took the history and we gave some assumptive treatment. But when I go to the hospital, a large hospital, we have this 8-10 lakh rupee endoscopy equipment which can show you a very nice magnified view of your voice box. And it shows cancer. And these patients come late. And this didn't go well with me. I didn't understand something that is good to detect voice box cancers early is there at a place where patients come late. And where it is required, we use mirrors and headlamps and all these instruments. So I went to my I went to my boss, my mentor, Dr. Ravi Nair, who's a senior professor, head of department at one time. We always have this wizard in our lives, right? So I went to him and I said, Sir, why can't we take any camera? I belong from an era where there were cameras and not so many mobile things. Why can't we take a camera and make sure that that looks at the voice box? So he did something. I, I thought he'd, you know, praise me, but he said something very important. He said, Jagdish, to to bhokne wala kutta hai ki kaatne wala kutta hai? Are you a barking dog or are you a biting dog? Now I'm thinking, I don't want to be a barking dog. So I said, I'm a biting dog. And why are you barking? <laughs> Everywhere I hear people bark. Why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? Why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? If you're a biting dog, you do something about it. Go make, make a camera, see if it works. So I was like, okay, I got his point. It made sense. I was like, add 10,000 rupee a month uh, salary. I kind of invested money, bought a camera, bought an endoscope, got an engineer, figured out a way that can this camera and the endoscope attach and show the same view. And I was amazed. Not only was I amazed that you could see the voice box, I could actually make every diagnosis from this handheld camera that a large endoscopic equipment does. <coughs> At one tenth the price. Right? And that is when Dr. Ravina and also felt that we are onto something. The only thing that you should do is don't stop. Make sure that this reaches the patient in some way. But I was like, what do I have to do to get this to the patient? To form a company. So I go to my wife and say, you're already a partner in marriage. Why don't you become the co-founder of the company? She said, no. <laughs> so I went to the next best option, her sister. <laughs> Danya, uh, she's an engineer, so she, she said I can as a part-time be you know, co-founder of the company. And me as a doctor, training to become ENT as a part-time, we both formed a company. But it wasn't easy. It absolutely wasn't easy. I mean, um, we, don't, we don't know engineering designing. We had to hire a design firm that was quite expensive, uh, but they were gracious enough to give us a grant in some form and we were somehow in support. My, my sister-in-law, Danya, she invested money. Her husband, who is a business background, he helped us out. Um, no investor would invest in me when we ran out of funds because investors don't invest in part-time people. Uh, government grants at that point of time took very long to even, you know, agree that you can get grants and, and we had no money and, and I had to develop this product. So, for the need of the hour, I, I started a, a parallel way to earn money. I didn't rob. <laughs> I started a teaching methodology called medical theater where I taught medical students medical subjects using theater and dramatics because I've been doing acting since I was small. And that became a business because for pharma companies, we started teaching medical topics to their representatives and they would pay huge sums of money for that. And with that, we could develop the product to some extent. But after that, my course started getting more and more uh, busy. It started getting more difficult for me to do and my sister-in-law had to leave the country and join her husband who got a job somewhere else. And Dr. Ravina said, look, this is not going to go on this way. We'll have to learn how to develop products first. We can't just keep doing hit and try. So, at that point of time, the Indian government had a fellowship program called Stanford India Biosign. And I got selected in that program. They select one doctor every year, along with an engineer, designer, and a business person. 
and um, I got selected. I thought, okay, let me go learn this process. But what do I do with this device? I didn't want it to be lying there. So I called the design firm that was making the product for me and I made them an offer they could not refuse. <laughs> and I licensed out the technology back to them. And I said, you develop it till I learn how we do this thing. And I come back and then we'll see where we can take this forward. And after doing that, I went to Stanford University. Um, there I learned two things. I had two aha moments. The first aha moment is all the doctors whom I met over there who were innovators were from India. <laughs> Many of them even trained in India. And the second thing that I learned is how they invent. And guys, this is the takeaway message that I got. They create a team first and then invent. <coughs> right? They create a team first. The team is cross-disciplinary. Doctor, engineer, designer, scientist, lawyer. That team spends one to two months in a hospital to understand problems together. Then they use a scoring system to figure out which problem is most important together. Then they find that problem and figure out what will it take to solve it together. They generate the idea together and they are in this journey together. What that does is when engineering and design teams go full time, where they feel they are a whole part of this and passionate, doctors can contribute where it's important and continue their clinical careers. And I was like, that is an eye-opener for me. Because when I started inventing with the idea and started to create a team, it's either a favor or it's either an employer-employee relationship, either it's a contract and it is not sustainable for a long period of time. So when I came back with that, I did two things. I redefined the need for that ENT screening device. I figured out there are less doctors in rural areas, but there are a lot of health workers. So redesigned the solution for health workers and helped this design uh, team, ICARIS, license the technology to a bigger company called Medtronic. And Medtronic is now using this uh, and it has screened over 200,000 patients for ENT diseases giving jobs to hundreds of health workers. And the other thing that I did with my fellowship team, which had an engineer, designer, this Siraj Bhagwan, Jonathan Pillai, Siddha Joshi was sitting here giving a talk. We were all part of the same team and we developed a liver biopsy device, which formed a startup company in Bangalore called Indio Labs. So with these, with these learnings of how team works, that actually worked, I was given the opportunity by the uh, Department of Biotechnology and Government of India to run this biodesign internship program for a year. And I wanted to try this teamwork approach. So I selected 12 people, I divided them into three teams of diff different kinds of people, doctor, engineer, designer. I made them understand the problem by going to the hospital and they worked together. Within a year, two of these products got licensed out to an Indian manufacturing company. One being Thorashield, which is a plural tapping device which removes fluid from the, that collects between the lung and its outer wall. The other one is called AccuFeed, a device that accurately puts the feeding tube in paralyzed patients, feeding tube into the stomach. And then I started understanding that if you have the right integration of the team and they all work together, doctors can easily engage with engineers and designers. So I came back to Bangalore and at Bangalore with a senior engineer, Mr. Vijayarajan, and a senior business person, Siraj Danani, I became a clinical director for a company called Inaxel, and we just implemented this teamwork philosophy of biodesign. We started a vertical for, with ENT products. The product called Sinocare, which is a balloon sinoplasty device, is already in the market from idea to market in two and a half years. The other product, Nozino, which is a nasal foreign body removal, is about to be out in a few months. The other vertical on critical care uh, is uh, creating a device that will reduce pneumonia that you get from being on a ventilator. And the other product is SARS, which helps children with lung disorders being transported from one hospital to the other by keeping their lungs functioning during that time. And then this is now working as a, as a machine. So we started training a lot of doctors because this knowledge needs to be shared between hundreds of doctors, engineers, uh, designers in this particular process um, by workshops, talks. Um, one day, Dr. Ravi Nair invited me to give a talk because he heard about the stuff that I was doing. And he uh, you know, organized a talk for doctors. And I gave this talk. I talked about my challenges and failures. And all doctors appreciated it. And I was waiting for appreciation from Dr. Ravi Nair. And he says, you're still barking. <laughs> and I'm like, no, sir. I've been doing stuff. If patients are getting the products. No, but you're barking about it. You're still barking. How many places? Can you go and talk to 1.3 billion people like this and tell what you've learned? How fast, is, how fast are people going to understand that? They said, what shall I do? It's like, write a book. So I did. <laughs> I wrote a book called Inventing Medical Devices, Perspective from India, so that all these challenges, experience, and how do you execute this process, put down in pen and paper so the knowledge can be disseminated. So 
with that, um, I have, uh, look forward to your support to stay connected as I continue this journey of improving healthcare in India and perhaps someday the world. Thank you very much.